Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the PiBook Pro. Now this is a docking station for your Raspberry Pi, but when it was originally released or originally announced, this was never meant to be an accessory for the Raspberry Pi. This was actually an accessory for Android devices that was launched on Kickstarter by another company. And what this would allow you to do is connect your Android device that supports DisplayLink to the USB Type-C port on here and display your Android device's screen here. You also have access to a touchpad and keyboard. But the company who originally launched the Kickstarter went out of business, they filed bankruptcy, and they disbanded. So somebody got a hold of the units that they already created, and now they're repurposing them as a Raspberry Pi accessory. And it actually works really well with the Raspberry Pi 3, 3B+, and the Raspberry Pi 4, which I'm running here. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Pi Book Pro. And one thing to note is this is not working over HDMI to this little laptop dock. This is actually working over USB Type-C using a DisplayPort driver that I've installed on the Raspberry Pi. They have the full instructions over on their website. It's pretty easy to set up. Unfortunately, there's no HDMI into this. It's working all over DisplayLink, and it'll pretty much work with any device that supports DisplayLink, like some Android devices, Windows PCs, and Linux computers, as long as you install the correct driver for DisplayLink. So basically, once you have the driver correctly installed on your Raspberry Pi, this little docking system here is going to work as a battery, keyboard, mouse, and a 1080p display. And as you can see, it's still branded with the Superbook S1 logos, and they even have the sticker on the bottom here. These have just been repurposed as a Raspberry Pi accessory. So as specs go on the Pi Book Pro, we have an 11.6 inch IPS 1080p display, multi-touch trackpad, one USB Type-C port, one USB full-size port, and I believe the battery is around 5,000 milliamp hours. Don't quote me on that because I haven't pulled it apart yet. We will by the end of this video. But the company is claiming six hours of battery life, and that's not including the Raspberry Pi pulling power from the USB port on the device itself. From my calculations, if you're powering your Raspberry Pi from the Pi Book Pro, you'd get around three and a half hours of battery life with the screen, keyboard, backlight, everything plugged in. Now it is missing one major feature for a docking system, and that's built-in speakers. So we don't have any built-in speakers on the Pi Book Pro. I really wish they would have added at least one on here. So in order to get this up and running with your Raspberry Pi 3 or 4, you will need to install the driver. They have a full setup guide on their website. You're also going to need two USB Type-C cables if you want to run power from the dock itself and video. So the first cable I plugged in is going to a USB 3.0 port on my Raspberry Pi, and then the other end is USB Type-C back to the dock. And the second cable is just power to the Raspberry Pi from the dock. So the Pi Book Pro was already powered on, but you can completely power it off from the power button on the unit itself. It's already sending power to my Raspberry Pi through that USB port, and it's going to send the display link signal through the USB 3.0 port on the Raspberry Pi 4, and that's going to allow us to get video on the Pi Book Pro. It's also going to allow the keyboard and trackpad to work with the Raspberry Pi. It's really hard for me to recommend the Pi Book Pro for media consumption because we don't have any built-in speakers, but if you're looking for an on-the-go development platform, this might be an awesome option for you, and the price on this is actually pretty good, at $80. Bucks. So for that $80, you're going to get a trackpad, backlit keyboard, a 1080p 11.6-inch display, and battery power for your Raspberry Pi. I've been using this for the last two days and everything's been working great. I do like the keyboard on this. It's that backlit keyboard so you can see it if you're in low light. By the way, it does come with a power supply, 12 volts, 3 amps. This is going to charge up the internal battery on the Pi Book Pro and it plugs in with a smaller barrel jack. It's a 1080 IPS panel. It's not the best quality panel out there, but it'll definitely get the job done and it looks great for a small 11.6 inch screen. One thing I have noticed is the top bar is a bit cut off and hopefully they can come up with a fix for this, but I believe it has to do with the display link driver that we're using right now. It's still fully usable, but it would be nice if it was fully visible. Now the keyboard on this thing is actually pretty great. I love the travel on the keys here. I've tested a lot of lower end laptops like the Lenovo's with the same exact size screen and the keyboards are pretty horrible there. I'm really surprised that they were able to make a decent keyboard in this form factor. I know it's hard to see in this video, but the keyboard is backlit and we do have a dedicated button to turn that on and off. We also have dedicated buttons for the screen brightness and this thing actually gets pretty bright. I'm about halfway right now and we'll take it all the way up as you can see, or we could go all the way down. I mean, you could turn this all the way down if you're not using it at the time and it's definitely going to save some power from that built in battery. And ever since I've had this, I've been powering my Raspberry Pi 4 at the stock clocks from the built in USB port. Now I haven't noticed any power warning indicators or anything like that. I don't get the little lightning bolt up in the top right hand corner. 
And I think it all has to do with that USB Type-C port we also have plugged into the USB 3.0 port on the Pi. We are feeding a little bit of power back into the Pi, so we are sending adequate voltage to the Raspberry Pi from the built-in battery here. I do wish that the PiBook Pro had built-in speakers, but I still wanted to give you a quick look at YouTube playback. We'll just go with a little 360 video because after all, we're still using a Raspberry Pi 4 here. This is not going to beef up your Pi by any means. And I'm at the stock clocks right now of 1.5 gigahertz. I really don't think we would be able to supply sufficient power to the Pi if we were overclocked any higher. And it finally went full screen on me. Now, if you're used to using the Raspberry Pi for YouTube video playback, you know we do encounter a little bit of screen tearing here and there. And personally, I really haven't noticed it being any worse over display length. Now, when it comes down to it, HDMI is definitely going to be superior. But as you can see here, it is working quite well. But again, we don't have any audio because there's no built-in speakers on the PiBook Pro. And that's a real letdown. Even if they would have added just one small speaker in the bottom here, would have made it so much better. Now you can always plug directly into the Pi's 3.5mm audio jack and get audio out, but it should have been built in. There is one other thing that I've noticed about at least the blue version that I have here. It's a fingerprint magnet. Now they have four different colors. Black, navy blue, which I have here, gold and silver. And I'm sure gold and silver wouldn't show up as much. But this navy blue, and I'm guessing the black is an absolute fingerprint magnet. Now I want to move over and do a quick tear down. We're just going to pull the bottom of this off. And there it is. I mean, it's just a big old battery in here. It's a 4,900 milliamp hour, 8.4 volt battery. And over on the right hand side, we have our controller board. So there's really not much else going on here. I was hoping there was a little more room in here to add, let's say, a dedicated Raspberry Pi 3 or 4. But unfortunately, there's not enough room in here for at least the full size Raspberry Pis. A Raspberry Pi Zero might fit right in here just fine, but you'd have to do a lot of soldering from that USB Type-C port to the USB port on the Pi Zero. So in the end, I do think this is a cool idea. Repurposing something that probably wasn't going to be used for something new is always good, but it's really hard for me to recommend this for media consumption, mainly because it's running over display length and we don't have built-in speakers. But if you're looking for a portable display slash battery for a Raspberry Pi for coding and other use case scenarios besides emulation and media consumption, this might be a great choice. And the price is right there at $79.99. You're getting that trackpad, keyboard, screen, and a built-in battery. But that's pretty much it for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the PiBook Pro, I will leave links in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.